ready. So I'm here today because I have a seven-year-old and um, I came in from a completely different angle with this whole, when this COVID thing unfolded. Um, I had been looking into the revolving door between the pharmaceutical industry and it's the regulatory bodies that help regulate uh, the products that they put on the market. And I started learning about the serious conflicts of interest. For example, Julie Gerberding, who worked for the CDC, she was the director for so many years, and then she went and took a, a position uh, at the vaccine division for Merck and made millions upon millions of dollars. And anyone can look up Julie Gerberding and see just how she was the one who fast-tracked the HPV vaccine to market. So there's just, there's so many layers, and I could go on for hours, but I think the reason that I'm here today is because... Um, we've had enough of these restrictions. There are so many more people suffering. Children are suffering. They are forced to be home distance learning. Uh, it, this has also ruined families who have to, who depend on both caregivers or the main caregiver to stay home to accommodate this distance learning. And um, parents will tell you story after story about the meltdowns and the struggles they've had and the fights and the disagreements. And um, for me personally, moving here, um, my seven-year-old, when we walk down the street or go hiking, we are uh, surrounded by masked faces. You see no expression anymore. And it, the mask takes away everything that it means to be human. We have our gestures which convey so much, but the face has so many different expressions and so many different feelings and attitudes that when we take that away, uh, we lose what it means to be human, I think. And what a scary world for my little boy to be in right now. Even when we scootered down the street the other night, two young women saw us coming 200 feet away, they threw their masks over their faces and ran across the road. We all know that children are not the cohort who are affected by this virus. If you dig into the research, you'll see that um, they simply are not dying from this illness, They're, this virus. And um, there's no reason why we should deny them everything that it means to be a child, the social interaction, the connection to look and read expressions and we learn from each other. The social learning is so important in those formative years of life and we're denying our children that. Um, we are making this world look like a really scary place and as Nick has already spoken to and every a lot of people have spoken to the fact that the data that does exist uh, and let's not forget that there's a lot of probable data out there. Probable meaning unproven and even the New York Times and Worldometers will touch on this in their uh, disclosures. They'll say we're all, we are conflating probable data with confirmed data. So probable tests, probable deaths. Um, what we, even what does exist is that the numbers are not high enough to warrant these isolation measures, the closure of businesses, the closures of beaches and parks. Let's talk about what we really need for help, uh, health. We need social interaction, hugs, touch. What do they say about babies and touch? And I see infants being separated from their mothers in hospitals because if the mother tests positive for COVID, the best thing she can do is actually breastfeed her infant and pass on those protective antibodies. Uh, we know that the antibody tests are useless. Not only are they just a boon for the industry, and the, uh, even the FDA admits that 50% of the antibody tests were, were just crap. Um, they also found in, a, in an Oxford study of 9,000 healthcare workers that the, the main uh, Abbott laboratories doing some of the antibody testing couldn't even detect low levels of antibodies because they do eventually fade. And what we, felt, what we are learning is that there is cross-protective T-cell immunity and we need to be talking about that. We need our healthy population like Sweden to be going out, boosting their immunity through exposure. That's how we build our immune systems, when you're healthy and you're strong and you can take the virus on and get over it and move on. And what we could have done instead was just take care of our elders and help them stay, you know, stay separate. And, but they didn't have to shut everyone down. I can, the, it, you cannot calculate how many more deaths have come from the unemployment rate, from the people who aren't getting paid, from the people who have to give up work to homeschool. This is just creating a sick and dependent society. And what this ultimately is about, finally, and I hate to say this because I didn't, I came into a whole nother arena here. I think wrenchinthegears.com, my gosh, 
it'll it just really explains the purpose of um, biometrics, contact tracing, ID 2020. And when you start to learn about uh, Gavi, Vaccine Alliance, and Bill Gates, and how Gavi and Bill Gates fund the World Health Organization, and all of the little layers that are connected there, and the conflicts of interest, this now for me, is it's quite clear that coronavirus has been, COVID-19, has been exploited for political, technological, and pharmaceutical gain. Nothing more. And it's time to end the lockdown. It's time to reopen schools without the masks. I've had enough. So thank you very much. Thank you for hearing me out. All right.